Hello there. I'm sorry I've been away for a while. I've been dealing with life in general, as you do. Um, also, my laptop failed for a while. Uh, the, the electronics worked fine, but the hinge failed. And it turned out Hewlett Packard did a recall, but they didn't bother to tell me, even though I'd registered my laptop with them. So, and because it was out of warranty, I didn't get a free fix, which is slightly annoying, especially when you open it up and you discover that the hinges were glued onto the body using epoxy. Anyway. So what have I got for you today? Well, this is what I would consider to be one of the more ridiculous products I've found on eBay. Um, it's a USB coffee cup. Now the thing that kind of stood out for me on the box was that, you can see that, it claims to have 32 meg, well, megabytes, megabits, I'm not sure, memory, 100 megs hard disk drive space, and at least one USB one interface. Uh, same sort of things written around the side. <clears throat> Let's have a look at the, uh, Specs function, inset lie battery use portably, can recharge repeatedly, magnetic water. That's actually slightly worrying sounding. Inset heating and warming function, automatic steering function, compatible with PC hardware. Uh, 130 mils volume, which is actually not very big. That's like four ounces in, in the old money. So that's really, no, that's basically not much more than an espresso. So if you wanted, um, if you're the sort of person who likes a big long cup of coffee in the morning, this is not for you. It comes with a USB cable and a heating function, test function, turn on, stir the liquid. So let's have a look at it. So basically it's a, it's a, a travel mug that stirs and heats apparently. Or so the, so it claims. Instructions, uh, typical sort of thing. Ah, focus. So basically it's actually saying that the PC requirements are 32 megs memory and 100 hard disk space and at least one USB one interface, which doesn't really make sense because if it's only drawing power, it should not need uh, data. It should be able to just charge off any USB socket or plug that generates power. So it came with this uh, USB lead that has a barrel connector on the end. And to charge it up, you plug it in here and plug this into your PC or your plug or whatever. And that's it. There's a lid which uh, pops on and off. There's a silicone seal, probably going to get lost. So anyway, what have we got here? Well, on the side, we have a stir button and uh, a slider which says off test heat. So test is testing the battery level because it's four because I have been charging this heat supposedly warms it up so let's start with a stir see if we can stir through that you hear that that is nasty it's actually not it's not really there's a little bit of water in there but it's actually not moving there we go. so yeah it's not really connecting it's probably the cheapest little DC motor available Couple to the cheapest, softest nylon gears they could find. Yeah, it, it doesn't really work. Oh. Yeah, it's never worked for me. So there you go. Heat function. I'm kind of curious if that works because I have actually been playing around with it and I haven't actually been able to get it to heat properly. So what I'm going to do is use the old uh, thermometer and take a temperature reading inside. 72.8 Fahrenheit. Oh, that's old money. I need to change it. 22 degrees. So what I'll do is I'll put on the heat function. And I might have to fast forward through this to see how it goes. But <clears throat> let's see if it has any effect. I have my doubts that it actually can legitimately heat anything. Oh, it is actually going up. Well, kind of. So, let's go away for a minute and come back. So there we go. It's uh, been heating now for about five minutes. And the temperature got up to 25. It started off at 22.8, got up to 25 or thereabouts. So it's not exactly what you would call heating. And I kind of suspected that because the size of a battery there is probably not going to provide much much energy to heat. Now, of course, you can take any battery and short circuit it and it'll generate a phenomenal amount of heat, but you'll wreck the battery in the process. So it's actually very hard to generate enough heat to heat liquid from a, any battery, no, a battery, a small battery. 
You can do it with a car battery, no problem. But um, let's take this thing apart and see how rubbish it is. Where's my screwdrivers? So yeah, um, you probably hear my neighbours having a chat there. They're having a bit of a party tonight. Uh, we've had lots of good weather in Dublin lately. Are these actually going to come off? Yes, they are. On their star, they're Phillips screwdriver heads, which is not what I expected, but that'll do. So let's see what I have. I'm just going to sit. I don't think there's going to be an 18650 in here because it doesn't seem big enough to hold an 18650. So I'm going to assume there's some kind of um, a lithium ion flat pack battery, as you see in a lot of these cheap gadgets that originate from the Far East. Um, probably a very low. Mm, MA uh, milliamp hour rating. Oh, there we go. No identifying features whatsoever, which is a pity. Very thin wiring leading into it. Let's see what we have under this. Um, oh, another layer. Oh, I might have to actually pull this out to get into it. That's a pity. Ah. Here goes. Oh, it appears to be pretty well glued in. Hmm, oh, hold on. I stand corrected. There's more screws there. So, um, <clears throat> after a bit of rest, uh, wrangling uh, and a bit of stomping using size 12 shoes, I finally got this opened. Um, let's see what we have. I need to get through here because I'm seeing something quite interesting. That's my neighbours. Actually, quite nice people to be honest with you. No, they don't normally make a bit of a racket like that. But uh, it's the summer, so I'm not complaining. I'm sure I've done the same many times myself. So the thing that I find interesting is there's no actual uh, connections there. There just seems to be the the spindle. And looking at the motor, it's it's got this thing here. So it looks like two magnets. And I'm just wondering if I haven't actually wrecked it. And I may have wrecked it. So these are magnetic. And now I'm wondering. If so, <clears throat> so yes, it would appear that I've uh, des destroyed the control board circuitry in dismantling. Dismantling the cup. <clears throat> so what I've done is I've actually disconnected the motor and attached it to the power supply, putting uh, three volts into it. So we can my arm because my power supply can be a bit funny at times. Let's go, yeah, three volts exactly. So let's just see what happens here. If I turn this on, yeah, we see the mag, it starts spinning. Look like at that. And get close enough without it. it uh, move this forward a bit. Damn it. Push this back into shape. That. That's kind of moving. It 
See? It's rattling. So it's actually moving. Um, I'm actually quite impressed by this. Oh, let's not do that. I'm just ramping up the volume. Sorry, the voltage. Yeah, I'm actually quite impressed by this because this is um, the same sort of system they use in laboratories for mixing solutions uh, on those uh, heaters. If I actually take the magnet off and just turn it, you can see it turns. So what you do in a laboratory, if you want to heat something and stir it at the same time, you put your beaker on the heating plate and under the heating plate, there's a motor with uh, magnets, just very similar to this arrangement here, but on a bigger scale, better quality. And you drop into your solution a bar magnet and the, as it heats up, the motor underneath rotates and stirs your liquid. So there's no actual direct contact between the thing that's stirring the liquid and uh, the motor itself. Uh, you've probably seen it in medical dramas and things like uh, CSI and Casualty. You always see like the, the jars bubbling away and the thing inside stirring them. So yeah, I'm actually quite impressed. I would have actually thought that <clears throat> something like this would have uh, had a mechanical connection and they would have used cheap, cheap uh, nasty gears. But no, it's actually uh, there's a, it's magnetically coupled. So that is probably what they mean by magnetic water on the box. Magnetic water. So it's actually a magnetically coupled stirrer. And um, it's impressive. But I'm afraid it's the only thing that's impressive about this. Um, the rest of it is rubbish. To be honest with you. Like it doesn't hold enough fluid, uh, liquids. Um, it's not as well coupled as it could be because it gets... I actually think that uh, this is probably not... Connect, um, well enough, uh, the magnets probably aren't strong enough or they're not too close enough. Oh no, and here's the heating element that they talked about. It looks like just, um, what is this anyway? Let's just peel it off. They just sellotaped it on and I don't think that is actually thermal tape. I think that's good old commoner garden sellotape or scotch tape if you prefer, if you're, the state, if you're in the States. Yeah, it's a standard... Um, Resistive wire. Where's me? Yeah, there's a wire. Um, I could test the the ohm rating on it, but I'm not going to bother because it's it's not working. Uh, it's uh, so yeah. That's where. There we go. It's um. It's rubbish. As is everything I test. Cheers, take care, bye-bye.